probably don't know lyrics to songs and I will sing them incorrectly. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek, midweek, break, break, break. <laughs> I can't talk, Jill, I'm so yeah, excited. I know, we're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> to talk about some of the stuff going on in Linux and open it. It's all these Steves, man, we were talking about. I'm mean, just thinking about this a vast cornucopia of people named Steve watching this show right now. Hi, Steve. Hello, other <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah. Doing it live in the pre-show. Um, yeah, we do occasionally talk about Linux stuff, but let's <laughs> talk about what we're up to before we jump into it. We got a lot of stuff to talk about this week because Gnome is getting a little bit explicit. Emerox back yeah. from the dead, even though, you know, don't call it a comeback open source DOS and um, what I had to like hop up in the last second and run to get the oh, props. And get your, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I got like two of them, man. And the, the sad thing is these just go back on a shelf, which is sad, but Hey, we're going to be talking about audio interfaces, but Joe, you've been playing. Um, What was that? Uh, like the Zelda game, but you climb a lot. I don't know exactly yeah, what it was. So, yeah, I, I had uh, last night I posted pictures in chat because I've been having fun playing the game demo for the beautiful upcoming game called Europa. It actually looks like a cross between Zelda and Genshin Impact, although it's not quite as an open world game as those games, but close. But it does have a lot of cool puzzles. So it's not about fighting in this game. You progress through puzzles. And I thought it was cool that DSNG Joe in chat, you know, recommended the game Jusant, which looks very similar. And I have it in my wish list on Steam. So thank you, Joe, for reminding me of that game because I've been waiting to play that as well. <laughs> but the, though, oh my gosh, the environment is just so lush and beautiful in Europa. It's, it just immediately struck me. This is a game I'm going to be playing. <laughs> I got to do already... like so much of it. I, I played that yeah. Ubisoft title that was like um, kind of like a Zelda game where it was like it had that same color palette to it. Oh, okay. It was like the, Greek mythology. The greens and yeah. light blues and yeah. <laughs> it, it, it just started making me ill. Like, oh. <laughs> Give me overcast and lightning. Oh yeah. Well, you know, Genshin Impact does have that. Uh, it gets it goes from day to night, and it's uh, sometimes cloudy. I'd rather chew off my own foot than play that Weeb game. Oh, <laughs> hey Weeb, Pyro Slime. <laughs> Ven doesn't want to battle Pyro Slimes. I don't. Not even love Ven. <laughs> like not at all, man. <laughs> I'd rather run, run Windows 11 like nobody does. Aww. <laughs> Speaking of operating systems, uh, this is a Linux show. So I do want to talk about right at the top something that happens in our Discord uh, every couple of months. It's like when a, you know, one dog starts howling, everybody starts howling along with it. Is somebody will post a NeoFetch screenshot. And that just starts then yeah. for the like next couple of minutes, man. People are just going through their machines, like doing, trying to out Neo fetch each other. But like, what's the most, you know, the biggest machine you have, the like weirdest one, like, you know what Neo fetch is, this thing you run in the terminal mm -hmm. and yeah. it shows you, it's like, Hey, I'm running this operating system. I got a little ASCII squiggly thing on it. And you know, here's the stats. There's not much to it. Been around for a long, long time. No oh, longer really that. around. This repository has been archived by the owner as of. April 26, 2024. It's now read only. That means Dylan's done. Dylan's out. What's mm -hmm. Dylan going to be up to? Farming, according to Dylan. They're like, you know what? Had a good run. Somebody <laughs> else can take this over. And, uh, but there, there's a billion, you know, Neo Fetch type things, right? Yeah. Like, lo there's lots of forks. Um, and, and some, you know, there's some written in, Python, some written in Go, in Rust. So there's all kinds of forks, and some uh, some have uh, hardware acceleration with your GPU. <laughs> and we've talked about here on LWW. Right. <laughs> I mean, sad to see it go. I mean, somebody's going to fork yeah. it, and I'm sure well, say, somebody's going to fork it and actively maintain it. There's yeah. the right thing to say. I'm sure a billion people have forked it over the years. So yeah. uh, I was surprised we were talking in the pre-show before we went live. I was like, do I even have NeoFetch installed? Because I typically only install it 
to participate in our Discord game. I'm like, I want to play too, you guys. And yeah. Like, Go away, Vin. I'm like, no, here. But yeah, I forgot to uninstall it because I don't have any use for it. But hey, RIP Neofitch, you had a good run. Let's go ahead and get up uh, right into it with the um, gnome being a little cussy. At least that's what I thought when I saw the show notes. I'm like, gnome's getting explicit? So here is something awesome for NVIDIA GPU Linux users. Last week, GNOME 46.1 desktop was released with explicit sync report. You might recall a few weeks ago on LWW number 418, we talked about explicit sync support being merged in the Wayland Compositor Protocol. And that this was one of the major hurdles to getting Linux users to adopt Wayland. Well, now with the latest GNOME 46.1 release, those dreams can become a reality. Almost! We still have to wait for new NVIDIA proprietary graphics drivers to be released that support explicit sync. But on the plus side, GNOME 46.1 Mutter Window and Compositing Manager has better support for hybrid graphics. So this is this is all good news, even though the GNOME explicit is is still not supported by NVIDIA. There was there's still some a lot of uh positive updates happening in the latest version of GNOME. <laughs> and hopefully NVIDIA will release their proprietary graphics drivers with explicit sync support very soon. That would be awesome. Come on, NVIDIA. You you can do it. <laughs> this is seems easy. Problem fixed. Don't run numb. <laughs> Well, the GNOME desktop is, is the first desktop to support explicit sync, so that's cool. But others will be following soon, I'm sure. KDE Plasma and maybe even XFCE. <laughs> that would it. be cool. <laughs> yeah, that's fixing the problem I don't have, though. Yeah. <laughs> You're not running Wayland right no, now. No, <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm not testing in production. You know, don't worry. Maybe, maybe in another 15 years we'll get around to it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is good. This is something you need to keep in mind, too. I mean, people get locked into their little Linux bubble where um, everybody's like AMD GPUs and everything's great and all that's doing. AMD is a rounding error in the GPU market. Um, most people have NVIDIA yeah. GPUs, and it's important for this stuff to get fixed and get sorted, especially if you're like, hey, come try Linux. And they're like, hey, I got an NVIDIA GPU. And if your response to that is to go buy a new GPU with as much as they cost right now, Get wrecked. All right. You're not helping anybody with that. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. There's no teams. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about a blast from the past. We're talking about Amarok. That's a name you not, might not have heard in a long, long time. But if you've yeah. been around on Linux for a long time, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> so, Ben, I like your, your show note title, Amarokin. Like, it's Amarokin on and on, which is <laughs> cool. So, yeah, like Ben said, OMG, after six years of a hiatus, one of my favorite open source music applications on Linux finally gets an upgrade. Amarok 3.0 Music Player has been released. And yes, it has been since March of 2018 that Amarok 2.9 was released for the KDE project. And Amarok 3.0 Castaway got a fresh port to the QT5 and KDE frameworks. Five, but work is actually still underway to port it to QT6 and KDE Framework 6. And this release of Amarok adds support for the FFmpeg 5.0 multimedia framework. And what I thought was cool is you can now drag and drop tra tracks from the context view to the playlist and copy the track details by clicking on the current track. That's very, very convenient. And also, to me, happily, the user interface has not really changed much since the KDE three days. <laughs> that makes me very happy. So I was happy Arthur and caught it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't stay on top of this stuff. Now, for a lot of people, if you've been around on Linux for the long, long time, like Amar Emarok was, it was like, what just kind of came out of nowhere for a lot of us. Like, wow, this is awesome. And yeah, five yeah. years since the last stable release for this 3.0 alpha was released in 2021. <laughs> so it's <laughs> been a minute. Now, this is not like Strawberry. This is a port of Amarok 2, which at the time was much hated. So uh, it's not, 
you know, based on the 1.4, which is like the ultra, like the OG. I'm like, oh, I want that. Now, there's still some work to be done. Like Jill said, they still need to move it to QT6 because QT5 is old business. Yeah. And I'll, I'll agree with that. And uh, future work is just going to be around bug fixes, man. Yeah. Now, 3.0 does uh, fix the issue with the lyrics wiki. Mm. Uh, that was no nice. longer working. That's been fixed. So you can get your just, I don't know, lyrics. I do, I've never cared about <laughs> that. I proudly don't know lyrics to songs that I will sing them incorrectly at yeah, karaoke. Yeah, same here, Vin. <laughs> but yeah, that screenshot, <laughs> that screenshot brings back some memories. And that's the it new sure version. Does. It looks just like I could take that. You could rewind it, you know, a decade and be like, hey, Vin. And I was like, yeah, it's Amarok. Let's use it. Let's go. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> this is something like see this is definitely one of the first like big boy apps i ever used that did yeah. things like pull an album art and mm -hmm. like for the podcast i'm like what we're living in the future it's got ratings on what this is crazy yeah. and mm -hmm. one thing i want to bring to point is this is a perfect example of you don't need to constantly mon monkey around with the user experience the ui the ux i mean this is discord take note here as i say discord because discord has been changing their mobile app every three days yeah and adding it's moving stuff around and so i'm like annoying yeah <laughs> i open it up i'm like oh what's this thing over here now it this just mm -hmm. works sometimes you just get it right it doesn't need to be fancy we don't need material design we don't need flat we we don't need uh, i don't know uh whatever whatever's next man um that works yeah. it's functional Leave it alone. It's good enough. Right? <laughs> yeah. You know, then again, XFCE, right? I'm like, yes. <laughs> you got it right. It's done. There's no way to improve on this. Let's, let's get everything I need. So, uh, yeah, take notes <laughs> when you're designing your app. Sometimes you're, you're just good. You're good. You don't need to have iterations over yeah. and over and over. Exactly. I don't remember um, what it was that stopped me from using Amarok. Uh, I think it was more that I just didn't really have it kind of became like the one KDE app that I had. Mm. And I was like, I don't want to install all the KDE QT stuff and all that. Like now it doesn't make any big a difference. You know, we got ginormous hard drives, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go, go play with it. If you've never used it, you know, yes, it, pretend it's retro, pretend it's vintage and, uh, go, go listen to like some bad recordings of, off cassette tapes or something you little hipsters but no go, yeah <laughs> go play with it it's fun it's still really powerful it's super usable and you're like all the stuff's just like right there there's no hamburger menus to be seen yeah, anywhere it's... way ahead of its time it's and awesome. it looks like too it still looks all right yeah <laughs> not as cool as this Yay. next story though that's right <laughs> dos 4.0 yeah. oh my gosh oh boy this is this is this has been a minute. 36 years after the release, DOS 4 has been open sourced. That means, you know, with a little bit of maths, Windows XP should be open sourced by 2038. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is true. <laughs> now, Scott Hansen uh, wrote, you know, just what they went through just to get this together and get it out over at Redmond. And yeah, this is like the real thing, too, because go back to the XP thing. This is something he brought up in a Hacker News discussion because it was like, Microsoft needs a clock for these things. And by that, they mean, hey, shouldn't we say, you know, by this date, we can open source this product, right? Yeah. That doesn't exist in Microsoft mm -hmm. right now. It's not there. There's no clock for releasing code. But this is legit. They were able to get this up and running, you know, get it built up and running on an original IBM XT with the original monochrome display adapter. No problems. and. Reading through the comments have been kind of fun. <laughs> First, let me be very clear. These comments have been scrubbed. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> they have. They, they smell scrubbed. Um, but my favorite one, um, line 82 of MS Bio 1 assembly um, are because IBM is fundamentally brain damaged. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, there, there's some uh, stronger stuff in there, but that was uh, my favorite. Brain damage seems to be their favorite um, way of saying um, yeah. something's being a dum-dum. 
Ghost of the Comments, play with it. Now, think about like usability of this preservation. That's also a good thing, but it's really important. DOS 4 should be able to run most of your retro DOS gaming collection, whereas DOS 2 wasn't going to do that. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah. And we're not too far off from like, you know, DOS Mageddon, which was DOS 622. I think there might have been a 623 after that. Yeah. But like 6 was like the big one. Once that's out, you're just good. And you, you just get all the DOS. You don't have to worry. You just run official DOS. And, but yeah, this should play all of your retro DOS games. It, but that's only if you want to get it set up, put it on real hardware and be authentic as possible, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, I'm hoping that DOS 6.22 is is the next step for open sourcing, because <laughs> that was a major release that got used for years and years. And I was actually so happy when I heard this news. You know, Microsoft had released the source for the disk operating system 1.25 and 2.0 10 years ago using the MIT license. And I actually remember being happily surprised by that. And DOS 4.0 is also being open sourced and released using the MIT license. I got a bit of trivia for everybody. I had to look it up myself. <laughs> we didn't have much in the way of GUIs back then. Yeah. Um, but DOS did have a... Had a, have a few, yes. <laughs> now, <laughs> the popular one, the one that was like from Microsoft, was DOS Shell. Mm -hmm. I yeah. still have muscle memory of typing in DOS shell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, when did DOS shell release? Anybody know? Any thoughts? I don't uh, know. Was, yeah, it was a while ago. <laughs> well, yes. I think I first saw it, uh, maybe DOS 5? We're just, we just like a year into it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had to go look that up. Uh, it was 1988. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Been a minute. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was kind of a blast. Uh, four and five. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty wild. Now, yeah. I had to run before Wonderful. the show. I had, to, I had yes. to get up and go run around <laughs> to the other side of the studio and get a regular, ordinary. Focus right. Then we got our focus right goth logo edition. Goth version. <laughs> you might have noticed for the past week and a half, somebody forgot to buy fingernail paint remover when they bought fingernail paint for a yes. bit for a video. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I noticed it today before we started the show. Oh, Ben still has his goth fingernails on. His black. This has been like for a week, man. <laughs> Why? <Yeah. laughs> because I'm cheap, kids, and I refuse to buy an entire bottle of fingernail paint. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I thought I had some at home, man. I thought I had some at home. Um, and I'm like, <laughs> man, all right, I'll scrub it off. Event. It'll probably come off because I didn't do it. If you go watch the video, it didn't do a great job. Old man Vin's not really into the fingernail painting bit business. But the reason we're talking about mm -hmm. this is, uh, yeah, that little goth logo on the Focusrite Solo Gen 4, the new hotness um, from our friends at Focusrite. I guess we can say our friends at Focusrite now. Because uh, th this I wanted to talk about because 6.8, kernel 6.8 is getting, there we go, boom. Yeah, boom. <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's coming out and it's in more recent uh, Linux operating systems that's being shipped and you're going to see more and more and more of it. It's got the drivers and all the bits needed to power the Gen 4. And I thought it was a good time just to talk about it because, hey. Yeah, I know. It's your standard interface. It's the focus, right? It's the YouTuber special. It's the base model. It's the solo. It's got two wins. It's got two outs. It's got a headphone jack. It's even got a volume knob on this one, though, which is a nice addition compared to Gen 1, Gen 2, and Gen 3. But what got my attention is, if I can skip ahead in my own video, this little guy. You can do a bunch of cool stuff with it. So... Focusrite helped the gentleman who was developing the mixer and setup software. He called it also Scarlet GUI. Now, this is basically just like the Linux version of Focusrite Control 2. If you're familiar with that in the Windows world, it lets you configure the device. You can set your levels. You can do mixing. You can configure routing. And on top of that, what you were just seeing here, you can update the firmware from Linux, which is never a given. Never a given. So I do, you know, your standard interfacing Linux thing. Do some audio checks with it, check out round trip latency, show you what it's like to get the programs up and running. 
And, uh, you know, I close it off with uh, what I do, what I grew up doing as a child, mm -hmm. much to my mother's chagrin, taking stuff apart. <laughs> if you always want to see a nice little informal breakdown of how do you rip this thing apart and more importantly, get it back together, <laughs> go check it out on interfacinglinux.com. There is a complete write up with pictures that you can yeah. click on and they go boom and zoom in like that. And it shows you everything with fancy charts and my test bench and a verdict and what I thought about it, what worked, what didn't, whether or not you should consider adding it to your audio interface collection. Or maybe you just bought one and you're like, how do mm -hmm. I get it to do that thing? Old man Ben, yeah. tell you. Go check it out, Interfacing Linux. I've been doing interface you know, a little review guide, stuff like that. I think the original, the one I did for the focus rate three has got like 16,000 views on YouTube. People are interested in this stuff. Why? Mm -hmm. Cause that's a cheap interface. Yeah. And very common. And I shouldn't a lot say cheap, have, right. I should say affordable yeah. and it's the one everybody tells yeah. you to get and we need to do yeah. it. Was I excited about it? No, <laughs> but <laughs> I was excited with the software. That's, that, that's yeah, why it's I did awesome. it. You know, I'm like, that's yeah. really cool. All right, Joe, we need to bounce out of here. Uh, okay. How long did this take? I always like to confuse people. Fire and all, 32 <laughs> minutes. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Not bad, which is yeah. going to confuse people because they're going to look and like wherever the times are going to be, it's not going to be anywhere near 32 minutes, man. They're like, wait, where'd the rest of the show go? <laughs> well, if you want to relive that live and uncut experience <laughs> and watch Jill paint her nails <laughs> next week. <laughs> Yeah. In the pre-show. <laughs> Is there anything you can do with nail polish? Because I got a whole bottle of that stuff, man. Oh, uh, um, uh, I know my husband does use it for uh, his model building work oh. <laughs> that he does. Yeah. <laughs> I always think everything I buy, I think in terms of like, how hard is this going to be to give away? Yeah, and I, I usually give it away to people when I get it for presents. And I have no idea. <laughs> you better watch out. Watch out of my house for trick or treating. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, hey, if you want to hear the entire uncut live version in a podcast format or you want a nice high quality video version, become a patron. Be yeah. one of the people that make this show possible. Loud, live, independent, no sponsors, no commercials, just a couple of yahoos having fun with Linux. I've been doing it for a long time and we're still lost. You know, we're not trying to sell you anything. We're not trying to change your mind no yeah. um <laughs> thanks to each and every one of you who do support us on patreon your name's in the credits make sure they're in the credits if i miss them because i do those by hand guys so i yeah. might miss and i all the times i'm like in here twice in here twice or change that hit me up let me know and you can do that you can get access to our discord super secret but we're in there the other six days of the week this chat just is amplified and it's just zzz, rolling by with a bunch of cool stuff yeah people talking about all types of things is keeps me interested <laughs> keeps me interested we do track media on tuesdays and yes. fridays if you're looking fun. for a group of adults with air quotes around them or maybe <laughs> you just need a break from adulting and you like some retro puzzle solving physics that might be your thing we'd love to have you no invitation needed all the lunch codes are in the track manias and channel punch those in come say hi and of course as a patron you get a high quality version of this that you don't have to like snarf off youtube it's a higher quality yeah. version with no ads built in you can just put it right in you can download it if you want however you want to rock and roll with it just as a thank you for letting us do this we do appreciate your support and speaking of that linuxgamecast.com strange place for a linux podcast but hey that i already had the website so let's stick with it that's where you can find all of linux weekly daily wednesdays episodes with videos and full show notes there's also a support button there we got libra pay and all those other types of things really important and amazon wish list we will hey, stop pal. this show man <laughs> like if you get something off of a wish list jill's got one i got one for the studio yeah. you're wondering what these words are back here those are called names and those are people <laughs> names are like oh those are people who've got stuff for the oh you're showing them. i'm like no i publicly shame you that's all that wall yes. here is for <laughs> like these are fiscally irresponsible human beings and i love each and every one of you um that's all there under the support tab and uh, that's gonna do it Come watch us live if you get a chance. We're up on Twitch again at Linux Teamcast and uh, 3 p.m. Usually, sometimes even with audio, Jill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, uh, the beginning of the show was uh, our pre show was a little bit of a fluke, but that doesn't we, we normally were, happen. We were doing some silent film in the beginning. Yeah. We had a soundtrack. <laughs> it just wasn't a talkie. 
It just yeah. took a minute. All right. <laughs> speaking of patrons, let's roll those credits. Okay, gonna thank all the beautiful people, our patrons, and all the different levels of patronage, including our advisor level with Omegas and our Theron, our executive producers, Barbara and Scott M. Atomic, Mike G, David, Drummer, <laughs> Ishep, Chicago Kicks People, Empty, Blasphemia, King Bonge, Super Dust Out, our sea monsters, David, Darkwing, System T, Mark, DS and Joe, Dirty Dean, our Death Notes, Rue, Turnover, Ogiwan, and Fox Dog, <laughs> our Chairlings, uh, Nick, Jason, <laughs> Nick and Jason, consider yourself, <laughs> consider yourself lucky, man. Most, most of the time, all the Chairlings just like, nah. No, I know Have I can't even whatever, go but... there, but I actually zoomed in on the chairlings this time, <laughs> but it went by too quick. <laughs> Beautiful people, have a great rest of your week, and we will see you next time. Bye, you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>